Hello everyone and welcome to another Minecraft update video. It's snapshot 24w09a and we're going to kick it back to a previous snapshot and that's so I can jog your memory and remind you of what these menu screens used to look like. Because in this snapshot Minecraft gets its UI overhauled and I've got to say I'm a big fan of these changes. Now when we go into a menu we get a darkened area, a blurred background, it just looks a lot cleaner in my opinion. And this has been applied all over the place. I really like the tabs at the top of the screen here. So now all of the menus that you go into in this game will have this new look. So let's go ahead and actually create this world. It's been applied to this screen too. And I'm looking right in your face. Ah yes, I spawned right in front of a tree. So when we press escape, you'll see that the game remains behind us. Even when we go into these different menus to change settings and stuff and that it's slightly blurred. We can actually go into the accessibility settings and now we've got this new option here which is background blurriness. If I slide it to the left, the background becomes clear. If we go all the way over to the right, we really increase that blurriness. And by default, it's set to 50% here in the middle. Let's go ahead and pop through a portal to go to the nether dimension. It's very brief, it has been changed. It's slightly cleaner now when you pop through. And that's because you're no longer seeing the dirt screen for a split second. This is also going to affect the game's ending credits. So I've gone to the end dimension, killed the ender dragon, and now we're looking at the end screen. This is a really welcome change. I think this looks much more interesting. Of course, the texture in the background, I believe, is from the end gateway block. I think these changes make a lot of sense. And if you want to get the traditional look back, you can select programmer art and then you'll get your dirt screen back in the menu. And I should point out, we're not talking about the in-game UI here, so things like anvils and chests and the player's inventory is the same as before. Next up, it is the turn of the wolves, specifically wolf armor, which has been given a massive buff and a new repairing system. So I've got four wolfies laid out here for the four different stages of their armor. You can see the texture changes when we go over to these ones. And I laid it out here. After the wolf armor has taken four hits, it'll change to a new texture. The second phase is at 20, the third at 44, and after a total of 64 hits, the wolf armor will break. Now, this is similar to iron golems because we have a visual indicator and we use a material to repair them, that being the armadillo scoop. But before I do that, I want to point out that this one and this one are almost identical. The changes to their armor texture is ever so slight. But anyway, we'll see it change when I click on this with the scoot to repair it. And the more damaged it is, I'll have to click on it more times to repair its durability. So you can now use scoot to repair your wolf armor when it's equipped on the wolf. Now, as it's worded and as I've tested, it would seem that this absorbs all damage. Well, not all types, but all of the damage. So I'm going to go and put lava in here which is going to do a heck of a lot of damage to our wolfie but now the armor is absorbing all of it let's go ahead and put this guy out of his misery i mean let's extinguish him y you know exactly what i meant so using this command we can go ahead and grab the data of the wolf and as you'll see here it's got 40 for its generic max health so this guy hasn't taken any damage but there are some damage types that it will take damage directly from magic i.e potions being one of them and if we go ahead and pick up the wolf armor you'll notice now in the inventory its texture's been moved up and it's got a durability bar below it and here we have a list of the damage types that bypass the armor entity cramming drowning drying out not sure what that one is freeze when it's inside of a block indirect magic and magic directly outside of the world border starvation fawns and the wither effect so now let's see what happens when we encounter a creeper in the wild. A direct hit. And it still has 40 health. However, it took a lot of damage on the armor. So here you can see it went down by 33. So the damage type can influence the amount of durability the wolf armor will take. And there is one more trick up the sleeve, which is the ability to dye the wolf armor. You can't do this by clicking on the wolf because that changes its color. But if you go into a crafting recipe, you can change its color. What I'll note here is that it works like leather armor and other dyeing systems where you can actually mix multiple dyes together to get the exact shade that you're after. 
Alright, so we got a couple here that are died, and I'll put down a third. The issue we're trying to take this in is that they always sort of rotate to you as you're looking at the different parts of the texture. So I've got this no AI wolf right here that will stay still and also isn't in the seated position as we have a look at the texture from all different sides. And since it's related to the wolf armor, I'll mention in this snapshot you can no longer brush baby armadillos for scoots. It's only adults now. And now for the rest of the changes in 1.20.5, if you control middle click a chest, it now remembers the name of that chest too. If you have any issues saving or loading chunks, then you're going to get a toast warning in game. And similar to that, if you try and join a single player world, when there's less than 64 megabytes of free disk space, you can also get a toast. These are similar to the pop-ups that appear in the top right of the screen. I just don't have a way to simulate these problems to show you it. Now this next change is a massive one. If you do any stuff in the game involving the give command and using MBT data, or if you make data packs and resource packs, you really want to go and give this article a read because there is a lot of information here to take in. This is because they are replacing MBT tags with structured components. These changes have been made to improve the performance, load times, and to continue enabling the creation of dynamic content. And they acknowledge here that this is a significant breaking change that means lots of data packs, custom maps will require a lot of effort to update to this version. And they pointed out they're aware that MBT tag has existed for a long time, that people have come up with creative uses for it, and that they've tried to identify all of these uses and incorporate them into the new system. They want to ensure that no functionality is lost without a suitable alternative. So if you're in this space of custom creations and you've got some feedback you want to get to Moyang, they are indeed listening. There is a link to their feedback site with a specific thread for this new item stack component change. So if I go into any detail here, we'll be going down a massive rabbit hole of changes, but there are just two things I want to show you quickly. This right here is an NBT tag, and when I use this command now, it doesn't give me armored wolf that has damage on it. The new format for structured components looks like this. We have the square brackets, and now when I give this to me, you can see that our wolf armor has some damage applied. These changes will unlikely unlock new capabilities as well, like this never star that I'm holding. It's not enchanted because there is an enchantment glint override you can use through the structured components. That's just one example, and I'm sure there's many new things too. So now we turn to the experimental changes for Minecraft 1.21 starting with the bogged mob which you can see has been retextured it now is a little more grisly looking in my opinion these leaves around its shoulders look a little darker and we've got several mushrooms poking out of its skull we can see the before and after changes to the bogs textures with these images here naturally i'm going to grab my shears and give them a little poke <laughs> You can see we got two red mushrooms from this one. What about you? That time we got two brown mushrooms. So yeah, you can get red or brown mushrooms by sharing them. I also learned from Slice Lime's video on the previous snapshot that these bogged mobs will spawn half as frequently as other regular mobs. And they also don't require access to the sky to spawn. So this means you could actually find them in the caves below the correct biome. The vault block has also undergone some really nice texture changes to make it more distinguished once again. Let's just give it a key so we can sort of see the animations in effect. And let's also put it alongside a spawner just so we can really see the difference between the two here. So the block has a new top texture and here you can see the before and after comparisons of its side textures. The last thing to talk about is the wind charge. I'm going to go ahead and just throw one on that breeze because it will bounce back and forth between these and it will actually do that basically forever because these things didn't despawn. So the change in this snapshot is that they now despawn after a certain amount of time. There was also some sort of randomness to when you throw one of these which has supposedly been removed in this snapshot. And that, my friends, brings us to the end of this one. I'll leave you with a question. Do you want to know what my Hermit Permit was in Hermitcraft Season 10? Do you even know what a Hermit Permit is? If you'd like to find out and you're not doing anything else right now, then go check out that episode of Hermitcraft. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Leave a like to support the channel. And I'll see you soon with another one. Bye-bye.